Hi and welcome to a new tutorial series. In this one we're going to be building an advanced dynamic form with Django and React. Now this series is going to be done a little bit differently to the ones that we have currently on the channel in that we're aiming to keep the length of these videos less than 10 minutes which is a lot less than the current length of the videos. And so let us know what you think about this instead of the longer videos. And if you actually prefer the longer videos then leave a comment down below and let us know what you think. And so in this video, all we're going to do is just set up our project and get everything ready to get started with creating a dynamic form. Now, a dynamic form is basically a form that's going to allow a lot of inputs and we're going to create our own custom model that will have a lot of different fields that will allow us to filter in a bunch of different ways. And so with all of that said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is create ourselves a virtual environment. If you don't have virtual environment installed, you can just run pip install virtual env and that will install the package for you. Once you've got that installed, you can then create one by calling virtual env and then the name of your environment, which I'll just call env. And so now we can see we've created the virtual environment and the folder is over here and we can then activate it by calling source env bin activate. That's the command for activating it on Mac or Linux. On Windows, it's slightly different. I believe it's env and then scripts and then activate. Now I might be wrong about this, so if I am, I'll leave something in the description of this video saying what the correct command is. And once you've got the environment activated, then we can go ahead and install Django. And this is the latest version, which is 2.1.7. And then we can go and create our project with Django admin start project and we're going to call this DJ filter and now we can see our DJ filter is over here and I'm going to go and rename the top level folder to source so that we know that all of our code is going to be inside there and immediately we can go ahead and run the server. So if we list things out, we've got the source folder, which we will change into and then we can run Python manage.py run server. And immediately we're greeted with this error, which says we have 15 unapplied migrations. So we can go ahead and just stop that and run Python manage.py migrate. And now we can see those migrations. Now, if we run the server again, we can then head into a browser and we can go to our local host. And we see the Django project is running. And so now we can go back into the project and I'm going to jump into DJ filter settings where first I'll actually get rid of this comment and I'll install those packages as well. And we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and add in our static and media settings for the project. So we already started off with the static URL and I'm just going to copy that and label this one, the media URL, which will go to slash media. And the next one we need to add is the static files dirs, which is basically a list of directories that are going to house our static files. And the only one we're going to add in here is going to be the static directory, which we'll create in a second. So we'll say os.path.join the base directory with static. And that is going to be a folder that we'll create here. So inside source, we'll then create static. And then lastly, we need the static root, which is going to be os.path.join, the base directory with static root, and then media root, which is the same concept, except this is media root. And then we can just jump into our URLs where we'll add some conditions for if our debug is set to true, then we'll add some URL paths here. So right here at the top, we're going to start by importing from django.conf import settings. And then we're going to say from django.conf.urls.static import static. And then we will say if settings.debug. So if debug is true, then we're going to add a new path. And we'll say URL patterns plus equals to static of settings.static URL which is the URL path. And then we specify the document root equal to settings.static root. 
and then we'll add another one and this is going to be the media URL and this will be the media route. So basically this is just if our settings.debug is true then we're going to add these URL paths in and otherwise if debug is set to false which is something we'll do in production then we will rather use something else to host the static files. For example if you're using DigitalOcean you would use something like Nginx which we've covered in a video that I'll link in the description of this video if you're interested as well. And so then to end off this video, I'm also just going to create the media directory. That ends off this first tutorial, just getting the project settings configured so that we can get started with the models and the data layout of what we're going to be working with in the series, which we'll start with in the next video. And so thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.